We have a very interesting subject this morning, and of course, it'll probably be interesting and unsolved when we finish, because it deals with one of the most curious and neglected areas of human research, and that is the magnetic fields, not only of man, but of the universe and of the smallest atom. The beginning of the study of magnetism can be traced back to Egypt and uh, the staffs and wands of the ancient priests were instruments of magnetic conjuring. Also we find the Greeks used it and the, among the Greeks and early Egyptians we have the first understanding of the nature of magnetism. It was used principally in healing. It was well known to Pythagoras who gave us considerable information on the subject, which was promptly forgotten by everybody else. Then we have little knowledge of it, except through the Arabs. The Chinese were aware of it because of the discovery of the Mariner's Compass. But for the most part, it was neglected until the uh, 17th century, when it became involved in the story of Rosicrucianism. The alchemists, the Rosicrucians, and the Hermetists all were on and folding phases of magnetic theory. Uh, the, uh, the first probably in more modern times to use it for healing purposes was Paracelsus of Hohenheim. It was also used strongly by the Rosicrucians and written about in considerable detail by Robert Flood, who was one of the great Rosicrucian apologists. It was also very well known to Athanasius Kircher, the great Jesuit scholar, but for the most part it was ignored. Then we come down a little later and we come upon a curious instrument, Mesmer's magnetic tub. This was a kind of tank in which many people put their feet at the same time and held hands and created a battery out of the water in the tank. It was studied carefully by Cariostro. It is also known that it interested St. Germain profoundly but it annoyed Benjamin Franklin all to pieces. He was never able to like the idea at all. Uh, after the development of Mesmer, which were promptly denied by nearly every field of science, the matter dropped into comparative obscurity until more recent times, when within the last 20, 25 years it has been revived strongly. And it's this revival that we want to talk about a little this morning, because it is one of the most interesting phases of our study of life. It is interesting that we should use magnetism so continuously and yet never really understand what it is. Uh, the uh, older folks of the Greek and Egyptian period represented the human being as contained within a kind of bubble. This bubble was referred to also uh, by the uh, physician and uh, who did the human atmosphere studies, Dr. Kilner of the University of Liverpool. Incidentally, the magnetic theory is based upon a very simple fact, namely that what we call empty air is, the, no, is the not empty at all. It is the most profoundly used of all the elements that we know anything about. We all live within air and have our meaning, being, and we know that if air fails, we die. But what we do not realize is that air is not just some oxygen or helium or something of this nature. Air is something in itself. It is a substance of itself. It is a substance so real and so important that it's almost impossible to estimate it. It is a tremendous field of magnetic energy. The atmosphere carries the magnetism of the sun. Ptolemy of Alexandria was one of the first to recognize the manifestations or emanations of solar, of solar light as containing an energy in addition to merely a luminous factor. The study of the magnetic powers of the sun will be more or less clearly understood by the study of the seasons. Winter, summer, spring, and these things have all to do with a magnetic factor in the air. And we think of it only as in trying to explain it as a physical astronomical phenomena, since as the uh, rotation 
and revolutions of the sun and planets. But each of these planets is a field of magnetic energy. And this energy comes to us through what we call air. Now, what is air, actually? Well, we have scientific definitions of it, but there's something more to it than that. Air is something in itself. It is a substance. It is not only a condition of climate or of weather. It is a basic factor in the contributions which make up existence. One thing we have learned from television is that air transmits. We know, for instance, that we can have all kinds of programs on the air at the same time. And they can come from all directions. And they can overlap and interlap. But each one will remain separately identified as though it was moving in a channel or a circuit of its own. And all these scrambling f films, some of which are scrambled inside as well as outside, uh, are working on one atmosphere, and that atmosphere is keeping each one of them in a perfect orbit of its own. You can have a dozen programs, if you turn them on, turn them off, but no, none of those programs is going through the air in the form we see it. We see the murder committed on the screen, and we see it broadcast into a theater somewhere, or into a home. But it isn't the murder that's going into the home. It, the uh, murder has not been visible when it went through the air. Something went through was vibration. And this vibration in, in the magnetic field can be divided into an infinite complexity of separate emanations. In other words, if we had a thousand different channels, they could be differentiated in the magnetic field so that each one would be broadcast correctly and properly for whatever it is. Thus we realize there's something out there besides air, something besides helium and oxygen, something besides the ordinary factors we take into consideration scientifically. We are in the presence of a mysterious agent, an agent that is part of everything that we are. Now, studying magnetism as it comes into the human body, we discover along with Tilda that each human body is surrounded by an etheric or energy field. This energy field is sometimes referred to as an aura, but it is not the true aura that we think of in metaphysics. This magnetic field is an area of energy. This area of energy forms a, an egg-like atmospheric sheath around the physical body, usually extending three to five feet from it in each direction. This energy field is the basis of virtue because this energy field depends for its reality, its serviceability, and its protecting power to mood, emotion, thought, and the attitudes of the person around which this magnetic field is gathered. In other words, the individual, if they are normal, if mentally, emotionally, and physically, they are keeping the rules. This magnetic field forms a tremendous protection. It is normal, it is healthy, it is constantly able to handle infections and all kinds of difficulties. It will help to heal wounds, it will help to recover the use of functions and organs, and if we are deprived of some part of the body, it will try to compensate for it. As long as the individual takes proper care of his magnetic field, it will serve him. Now, this is a phase of morality that is generally overlooked. It is assumed that these magnetic fields uh, are something you don't pay much attention to. They're there, maybe they'll help a little. But the truth of the matter is, the practically the whole survival of the individual depends upon maintaining the integrity of this flow of energy into the magnetic field. This energy comes from the sun, it comes through a mysterious energy tube in the magnetic field. It enters the individual through the crown of the head. It disseminates through the entire body. And it's excreted back again through the lower centers of the body and is re-cleansed by the solar energy. This is a kind of a little private tank or capsule of life that we are all carrying about with us all the time. Now, the problem of morality in this is very definite. 
The moment we break rules, we damage that magnetic flow. We have got to keep the laws of nature, and these in turn are the laws of God, or the magnetic field fails. It can fail because of physical intemperances, which reduce its integrity and reduce its power. It can be wasted in riotous living, which is a common cause these days. It can be variously destroyed by moods, by attitudes, by fears, by complexes. It can be destroyed or damaged by alcohol, drugs, narcotics, all kinds of things. But if this field is damaged, it immediately reacts into health. It, da it damages the individual's vitality. It makes him more easily subject to contagions and infections, and it definitely shortens the life expectancy. Now, if this is the soul, why do we want to consider it as a, as a moral factor? In other words, what is morality? To the ancients, it was obedience to the, word, the words of God or the laws of God. In more, in more modern times, with more intelligent people, it is obedience with the evident will of deity as manifested in creation. Virtue lies in whatever builds up the magnetic fields. Vice is that which tears them down. No human interception can, inter can interfere with this in any way. Therefore, if we are good, it's not because the book says we should be. It's not because it was thundered by the laws on Sinai. It is because we keep the rules of the integration of the human structure, that we use the magnetic fields correctly and protect our health and our happiness and our well-being in that way. Now, we think of the magnetic field as surrounding the entire structure of the body, as Kilner shows in his work on the human atmosphere, and Babbitt also in his study of the atom. This, however, is only a phase of it. Each part of the body has a magnetic field. Each unit within the individual has its survival in a unit of energy. And this unit of energy is present in the smallest subdivision of imaginable space. It is in the tiniest atom. There is no such a thing as a dead particle in the universe. Even if it is killed by something, the very disintegrating process is a, is a symbol of life energy. Therefore, we are confronted with the natural problem of realizing that virtue is to keep the law of the energy field. Now, the law of the energy field, just by coincidence, is also the law of integrity. The energy field is what establishes right and wrong. The energy field tells us that to lose our disposition and temper fit is wrong. Uh, to use various negative, destructive attitudes is wrong. To compromise the principles of right living is wrong. To think badly, to feel unpleasantly, to be engaged in any action or concept which is contrary to the common good damages the magnetic field and therefore is wrong. Selfishness injures that field. Every vice we know the breaking of any of the Ten Commandments and a number of other rules results in damage to that field. It has nothing to do with nation. It has nothing to do with the ordinary concepts of codes because the final code itself is based upon the life principle in each part of the human constitution. So we have each little cell has its own moral responsibilities. The stomach has its own magnetic field. The stomach is not simply an organ. It is an organism. It is a living thing within the human body. The same is true of the heart, the brain, the glandular structure, all the organs, the intestines, all the motor system, the nervous system, the endocrine system. These are all entities. They are entities of magnetic unities. They are part of living organisms which are cooperating together for the common good. To abuse one is to damage all. To neglect one is to neglect all. Each of these organs has its own field in the body. And all these fields together constitute the, the grand magnetic field that surrounds the complete person. Now that we go inside of this for a moment to see what we're dealing with. So we go back to Pythagoras, who was very uh, timely in that. 
he tells us that in Egypt there was a temple in which therapy was the result of this contemplation of uh, symmetrical geometric solids. In other words, the images of therapy were mathematical cubes, octagons, and various forms, so decahedrons, each one placed upon a kind of altar or pedestal for the contemplation of the sephira. All were symmetric geometric solids, perfect and complete in structure. To look upon them was therapeutic, because look to look upon them accepted their energy as a reality in our lives. Now these stone solids apparently were not alive. They only gave the impression of value, but actually they were alive. Every form in nature, natural or artificial, has a magnetic field. From the tiniest atom to the greatest galaxy, the magnetic fields are present, and the rules of each of them must be obeyed. Now if an individual looking at a geometric solid sees in it a perfect proportion, this realization enters into the subconscious life of the person. The, the imagery, of, imagery of that solid is sent into the consciousness in the form of a benevolent magnetic center. It means that the individual is seeing a harmony, is seeing something in perfect order and perfect correctness. And in this, and in visualizing it, wherever we see perfection, it improves ourselves. Wherever we accept discord as inevitable, it injures ourselves. Everywhere looking around us in nature, we see that all natural things are benevolent. It is only when these are abused, mostly by humanity, that these benevolences are lost. So we find that we live in a universe in which everything is in harmony if we are. Now we can say, of course, that somebody else might be out of harmony, and this could injure us. Actually, it's not quite true. The magnetic field which protects us, protects us against any negative magnetic field that does not arise within ourselves. We are not contaminated by other people, unless by our very conscious weakness, or our intellectual weakness, or our emotional weakness, we surrender our integrity to the attitudes of other people. If we commit misdemeanors of one kind or another, we are responsible by the effect of these uh, mistakes on our own magnetic field. Now the magnetic field not only covers this type of thing, but it covers elimination. The intestinal walls, all of this type of thing is damaged, as we know, by hysteria. Uh, by various moods. The individual becomes ill because of a bad disposition. Now we consider this to be just symbol of something that happens that way, but it is not. The individual who is sickened by dispositional fault is sickened because he has damaged the, meta the uh, field, the magnetic field of some essential part of his own nature. If he has damaged the magnetic field of his digestive system, he will have dyspepsia. And if the dyspepsia lasts long enough and the magnetic field is thickened long enough, then long uh, enduring chronic ailments can set in. No individual actually is infected entirely from himself, but never completely without himself. All of these unities of facts must be in harmony. Now in the Rosicrucian philosophy, we had alchemy, the transmutation of various phases of life. Alchemy was a transformation and a transmutation of energies. And these energies are essentially the same ones that we have in magnetism. We therefore have the a constant realization that everything we do and everything that we see and have has values of its own. Now let us pick up a pebble from the beach and we suddenly realize that we're in the presence of a little stone. Today there is quite an interest in little stones, all kinds of stones. We are interested in the crystals that form in rocks and all these types of things. But crystals are formed by magnetism. They are formed by a rate of vibration peculiar to a certain element. And that particular rate of vibration can evolve through the mineral, plant, vegetable, and animal. 
it is always present. There is a magnetic core on each kingdom, and each kingdom unfolds within this magnetic field. And within each of the com composite fields, individual members of the fields, with various degrees of growth, are in variously individually conditioned. Everywhere, this process of keeping faith with integrity is that become, becomes the natural secret of security, survival, and world peace. Now, we can say that it would be very unlikely un that we'll say a potato could have a magnetic field of its own, but it does. In fact, every cell within the potato has a magnetic field of its own. Therefore, we come into the problem of nutrition. And nutrition is very largely the study of the magnetic fields of various food products. It also tells us what happens when these food products are adulterated or are variously misused or uh, poisonous elements are introduced into them. All this is part of a mystery that is solved in magnetism. We pass laws against these misuses, but we fail to realize that it is not just the physical factor that we have to work with. The physical factor is only a fragment of it. The main problem is to realize that behind all of these problems, whether of government or of religion or of philosophy, all these things are in trouble because of lack of integrity. And integrity is simply keeping the laws and rules of energy fields. Each field has its own integrities. All integrities in all fields are compatible. All lack of integrities, all departures from integrity in any or all fields are in conflict constantly. The only way the individual can escape conflict is by never abusing the energy factors of his own life. He must never abuse his body, his emotions, or his mind, he must never permit himself to develop attitudes that are incompatible with the integrities which nature has bestowed. The magnetic fields are absolutely honest. There is no possible way of making them dishonest. The only thing we can do with them is to destroy or limit the manifestation of their integrity. If we break the rule, we lose the benefit of that particular energy. When we lose that benefit, we then say that evil has come to us. But it is not an evil thing that has come to us. It is the failure of a good thing to be developed and, and purified and intensified. Now, the, imagine, the elementary fields, the magnetic fields, are also in a state of constant evolution. They're in evolution in the life of the person. The individual may be born on a certain level of magnetic integrity. If he becomes a better person, he strengthens these uh, values in himself because actually it is all a matter of gradually strengthening the perfection of an energy resource. Now, no one is going to perfect it in one life or a hundred lives maybe, but he's going to grow. And the more integrity grows, the more rapidly the individual becomes harmoniously adjusted to the principle of life to which he belongs. In our world at the present time, we are in a sad state in which practically everyone has broken every conceivable rule. We are living day by day trying to live off the profits from our own mistakes, and this is not really profitable. We are not re realizing that this has nothing to do primarily with the theology. This has nothing to do with laws of government. This has nothing to do, actually, with our legal codes. It has to do with the relationship of energy to its proper ends and purposes. We know what it's supposed to be. We know what it's supposed to do. And we know that it isn't accomplishing that. Now, we, they would say that something we might say as integrity is not a thing. It is something, an attitude. It is an approach to a thing. But this is not really true. Integrity is also a magnetic field. Everything is. Sorrow is a magnetic field. Uh, ocean water is a magnetic field. Everything that has an existence has a magnetic, magnetic field. It may have not one that is not even visible. 
and the whole of our atmosphere, the whole of the world in which we live, is one mass of magnetic interplays. But as long as these are kept honest, they are all compatible. And a universe in which there was no dishonesty would be free from every infirmity. But it's not possible as yet to achieve to this. But we can achieve to varying degrees of it, and we can exceed and excel the amount we are born with if we decide to stay with it for the period duration of our lives. Therefore, we can look around us and see what constitutes a magnetic field. Let us take, for instance, our television industry, which is in very poor shape at the present time. Television is actually using magnetism. It is part of a world of electronics, which we consider now to be simply a physical thing. So we say to ourselves, we have all these stations, a great many of them, and they are all broadcasting on various wavelengths. Among others, we have a special station for the police department. We have a special station for the fire department. We have all kinds of internal usages of these mechanisms which we call transmissions. But when we get all through with it, television, transmission, is a, as a work achieved by energy. There is an energy field, and it is unfolding and developing in a larger an energy field. The atmosphere through which these messages pass is itself a great field of life, and it is alive. Space is alive. Space is not merely some atoms alive in a vacuum. Space itself as a substance and essence is part of the great magnetism of the sun. Now we have here all these stations broadcasting on their own wavelengths. Now into this magnetic field, which we call the atmosphere, is dumped a conglomerate you wouldn't believe. There's all kinds of things. Not only the conglomerate of the television, but the conglomerate of senates and houses of representatives and the various governments religions pouring their influences into it. This atmosphere, which we can see right through, if it isn't for the smog, is continuously being filled with something. And yet, with all that, this thing which we call atmosphere, and is empty, so-called, nothing to see, is able to differentiate those stations so perfectly that what you see here will go through that air, and there's no image going through the air and it will come out again in another receiving set, be proving conclusively that in its entire transmission, perhaps around the world, it was never for one moment deprived of its integrity or its individuality. It was never massed into other things. Now, occasionally we make a mistake and try to put too many things on one channel, but that is up to us. If, there, if we do it right, there will always be a channel for anything we want to channel that way. But it will always come through although it is coming through a medium which we can't see, and at any point along the way there's no program noticeable, no program possible, but at a, at a proper point, a receiving station, can recreate that particular program in all its detail, although it was passed through maybe thousands of miles of so-called empty atmosphere. And all these different channels have never, begun, have never become confused unless we have improperly channeled them. So we have all this proof that there is something out there in space. Now that what's out of there in space is also subject to toxin. We can say that some broadcasts are toxic. We can say that anything that goes through that space, which by vibratory, vibratory rate is not good, is damaging not only itself, but its recipients, and is also poisoning the channel. As long as we have corrupt patterns, as long as aggressive commercialism, as long as corruption is indulged in over the airways, we will have magnetic sickness in the air. We will have it in the air, and it will permeate our homes, our families, our governments, and our nations. We will sicken that level through which that particular energy flows, so that the energies that we are used for communication have their own sicknesses. 
they have their own vibratory rates. And the problem is the corruption of a communication media does not mean that the individual will have a complete collapse of his system. It will mean only that that part of his system which is turned into that community medium will be damaged. He can go right on, go to church, and build up that one. In the meantime, however, the television is tearing down another energy field. Now, as you tear down these energy fields, which most people don't even know exist or believe in, you are also opening yourself to all kinds of sickness and also all kinds of moral energy decay. You are opening yourself to the corruptions of the life principles which are necessary to maintain you. The moment you damage a level of integrity in your own magnetism, that level of integrity, of integrity becomes sick. The moment that becomes sick, part of the defense against exterior problems is reduced. The only way in which the individual can be really dominated by anything except himself is when he sells out his own energy and becomes negative to other things. He has to relinquish his own integrity before he can be damaged by outside forces. There isn't enough evil in all the world to destroy the integrity of one person. He must destroy it himself, or compromise it, or relax it, or be talked into something. But it has to be his own action. Therefore, the damages are, in a sense, not only moral, but are absolutely just in their actual integrities. And this is the way in which, apparently, as the Chinese noted, the universe creates the concept of right and wrong. This right and wrong is simply a matter of what builds up and what tears down the essential energies upon which life depends. So we have this problem in every field of life. We have it in the narcotics problem. We have it in a large part of commercialism. We have it wherever there is an, an attitude of putting profit in advance or over integrity. Wherever the individual makes this compromise, he immediately becomes a part of this particular problem. Now we'll take another phase of it. The person is looking uh, with his eyes at something that he sees. He can be reading a book. He can be watching a television. He can be outside watching a, a horse race. He can be outside watching a golf ball. Whatever he is doing, his eyes are receiving energy. The energy, the, mag <coughs> the magnetism, which carries the image from the outside to his own inner optical centers, is like the same thing as in the case of television. The golf ball definitely does not go in from the golf field into his eye. What goes into his eye is no golf ball, but it is a potential which will immediately be reactivated into the appearance of a golf ball. He will see it because it was changed into an energy formula received into himself and then reinterpreted again as what he has seen. And he will have no knowledge of anything except what he saw. Now this is becoming more and more obvious to us as we go further into the study of computers. This is all part of the process of things being changed from what they appear to be to the energy equivalents of themselves and then restored to their forms in order to be acceptable to our various faculty perceptions. Therefore, again, everything becomes a, a, a matter of keeping the energy fields clean. And the any, only way they can be kept clean is by using them properly. Now, two people watching a golf game may see the same game. One is, is interested merely in the fact that it is a recreation. The other person may be very competitive, determined to win at all costs, and perfectly willing to cheat a little if it can win quicker. In the first place, the energy is perfectly okay. The uh, vibrations are normal. But in the second, ulterior motives have entered into the playing of the game. And this is something that is troubling us throughout the sports world at the present time. Practically every sport has been commercialized. And by commercialization, we simply mean that it is no longer a sport, but a means of profit to some and loss to others. The moment this happens, the magnetic field is tainted. 
And from that time on, everyone who takes on the negative attitude damages himself. Now, 99 people may take it on and damage themselves, but a hundredth person who does not take it on does not damage themselves, simply because the others do. The idea that damage is contagious or actually infectious is only true if the individual who is the recipient is basically inconsistent with integrity themselves. There is no reason why anyone should, not, should recognize the fact that another person is capable of contributing to their delinquency. For it is said definitely that many may fall upon the right hand and many upon the left hand, but the just person shall not be moved. We are all, therefore, wrong when we say that civilization is destroying us. That is not true. What is destroying us is our acceptance into our in own inner life of the shortcomings and mistakes that we associate with civilization. We get into a political tangle and we start hating people and we start guerrilla warfares. And guerrilla warfare is simply another negative use of, of energy. All of the energy of life has to be used properly. The moment it is abused, it becomes dangerous. So we go on a little further into something else, the arts. Every picture that we see has a magnetic field. The fact that it apparently is a work of art on canvas or carved in wood and stone does not affect the fact that any form, every form that is integrated is alive. And every form that is alive is alive because of factors brought together in a certain specific pattern. In the case of a painting, it is the, the life in a canvas the life in a frame, the life in each twisted tube, and then in the life of the artist. Everything, and the object of the picture, everything is made up of living elements. This idea that everything is dead, that can't run around, is a mistake. Everything is alive that can be seen. A chair is alive because it has a magnetic field, and this magnetic field changes with every chair, and yet there is always this problem of what is right and what is wrong. A good chair will always have a good magnetic field. A chair which we destroy by misuse will be destroyed and we will suffer in our magnetic field for this act of destruction. Everyone is responsible for the destruction of the mistake that he causes. And in every case, the object of that mistake is either nullified or broken down or discredited in some way. So we go on, we take a little look around and we see uh, pictures. Well, we see the Venus de Milo, uh, the armless wonder, and we wonder if it has any magnetic field. It certainly has. It has magnetic field and we can revi revive that field in ourselves every time we think of it. If we've ever seen the picture, that picture's image, or the statue itself, will be with us as long as we live. If what we do about it, we not very much usually, but it's there. It's a fact. And uh, if the picture is good, and the painting is good, and the carving is proper, these all add to the goodness of things. If an artist, however, starts a career of corrupt art, he is damaging his own magnetic field, and he is damaging the magnetic field of those who approve of what he has done and accept it. That is the reason why the censorship of integrity is important to art, music, and every other field, because it is part of the inevitable laws of life. Incidentally, therefore, where we find uh, hard rock and these things which are becoming dangerous, our doctors tell us they are dangerous, our neurologists tell us they, they are dangerous, and all that, but no one has really managed to think why, except noise is unpleasant, or noise is dangerous to small children. The real, ma the real damage is to the magnetic fields. The magnetic field of the small child can be so badly damaged that it can never really recover. Because if it happens before it has the age of consent, before it reaches up to the point where it chooses its own life, it has to be dependent upon someone and the person upon whom it is dependent is also damaged if they do not demand integrity. Wherever integrity is damaged, 
the one who causes the damage is the primary one who must pay. And if the individual causes his own damage, then he is the one that must pay for it. But the damage is not in the building or in the rock or in the stone. It is in the magnetic field. It is in that part of ourselves which we depend upon to maintain our various integrities. Today, neurosis, neurosis and other emotional ailments are very frequent. <clears throat> and we have to give considerable thought, therefore, to the causes of these things. We look around us and we see a generation which has lost all sense of value because it doesn't even believe in value. It also has been corrupted by the example of the previous generation that has torn down most of the ideals and dreams with which the civilization has been built. The only way we can really get to this would be through a reorganization of our science of uh, energies. We would have to have a full and scientific study of all of the energy fields that are involved in human life. We would have to therefore come to the conclusion that there is no problem in which these fields uh, can be evaded. And as these fields are all essentially right, and the, diver and the diversion of this to something else is wrong, we then have the basic value of virtue, the basic value of doing it right in the first place, or what we might call a reformation. A reformation is nothing but a reform of the use of available energy. Everything is energy. Atomic bombs are energy. Uh, the oil spill in, in Alaska is energy, waste energy, and abuse of energy. All these things. And they all arise from something being wrong in the integrities of life. We have compromised principle by going away from the energy values. So we go back to the individual now and we find him standing in the midst of his own magnetic field with his structure protected by uh, the constant radiating force of outflowing energy an outflowing energy that vitalizes everything from the center outward and nourishes the uh, solar system, which is the human body, from the level of the sun as in astronomy. The ancient astrologers believed that these energy fields were originated in man himself, and that the source of all the energy fields in the human body is the heart, that this is the thing from which all else radiates. Therefore, the most dangerous of all corruption is the abuse of love, abuse of friendship, abuse of integrities, abuse of fidelities, and abuse of those things of benevolence, mercy, and compassion, which are associated with the heart. As those energies remain firm, the heart radiating out to the circumference of the magnetic field of the body is completely protective. It will be practically impossible for anything to damage it in the area where it is functioning properly. There may be other functions which is not yet perfected, but if the individual is basically honorable, he will be able to perfect these without too much trouble. Actually, however, if these energies are wrong, if the individual begins to hate somebody, or an individual breaks a friendship from selfishness, or an individual breaks a friendship for advantage or gain, for physical or economic gain, Immediately this defense is down. The individual who cheats has lowered his defenses against being cheated in his own turn. Everything, if he does an evil, he opens the way for an evil to be done to him because he has destroyed the magnetic defenses. Now you can't say where those defenses are or what exactly you understand them, but they are invisible, but they are very real. They are real and they represent an actual flow of energy. Now in the Middle Ages we had a magic come into this too. And we realized something that is seemingly coming back to us day, today. Namely that inanimate objects have magnetic fields. Therefore stones, uh, trees, everything we can think of is subject to magnetic existence. And these magnetic existences uh, are radiant. They uh, convey meaning and, th and value in all directions. Therefore, we know why Paracelsus made such a point of certain uh, 
uh, talismans and things of that nature because he believes that they had to do with the magnetic field. He was the one probably who first made the use thing do in an effort to gather certain magnetic values from it. He lived in Switzerland where the dew is very heavy and he put glass plates out on little stands and on these glass plates at night under certain positions of the planets and the moon he gathered the dew impregnated with the vibrations of the planetary positions at the time of the uh, exposure. This, these materials he bottled, bottled and labeled exactly as he would an ordinary medication. And he gave these to the sick when an ailment arose that required this type of medication. He therefore developed something that was almost the same as a very high degree of homeopathy where natural remedies derived directly from nature without conditioning of any kind were suitable to correct certain difficulties which might arise from the depletion of natural resources. And this is the same as almost, almost every other phase of life. Religion, for example, every building, every church is a living entity. Every bank is a living entity. Every war office is a living entity. These things are not merely buildings. They are embodiments of attitudes. Everything is alive with the quality for which it was created. The war office is tied to war. The uh, bank is tied to banking. But banking is a living fact. It is the banking that is the real living involvement in the so-called story of banking. Uh, these things are all alive. And each one of these, as it comes into life, is born with a certain responsibility. We will say that a young person born into a family is born to help to maintain that family, to protect it, serve it, and serve with it for the completion and perfection of the community. The same is true of a bank. A bank is part of an organization, part of an entity, part of something created for a purpose. Now, if the bank fulfills this purpose honorably, it is then healthy. If, on the other hand, it decides to make an unreasonable profit, if it decides to uh, sacrifice its integrity for the advancement of its own institutional existence, there is trouble. The bank will ultimately go broke. The stock exchange, when it was created to help farmers and merchants uh, to share their goods and make proper and reasonable investments, as they all sat together under a tree in, southern, in the south end of uh, New York, if this uh, uh, institution had remained a benevolent organization of service, it would be still probably very practical and very useful. But instead of being that, it has now become a, a structure of misuses and abuses. And the result is it is gradually destroying itself. Now entities, a republic is an, is a, an entity. It is a magnetic field. An autocracy is a field. A, a, a monarchy is a field. A communistic institution is a field. Every one of these organizations use energy. They use it in a thousand different ways. Political speeches, harangues on the street corners, battles in the, in the galleries and back roads. Everything is involved. And every one of these energy fields that becomes corrupted in any form or in any way is doomed to disaster. Therefore, our, our, our code of honor is not based upon the Mosaic Code alone, alone, although that is a very good one. It is actually based upon use and abuse. There is no possibility of, ab of an abuse succeeding. It will seem to succeed for a little while. It will succeed in the same way that an abuse of the body will apparently provide the individual with an opportunity to make very serious mistakes. But in the end, the energy fields pay the bill. Every misuse of life responsibility, use of basic materials, the abuse of forests, the abuse of water, the corruption of air, all these things are paid for in magnetic defects. And we are beginning to recognize them now. We are wondering why some of these strange things happen. 
that have been happening in the last few years. Nuclear fission is a great tragedy, not because it simply offends the peace-loving human being, but because it is a misuse, a violent corruption of energy. It is the use of a divine power to injure other people. Therefore, that which lives by the sword must perish by the sword. So our whole morality is a matter of life energies. It is a matter of gradually bringing all our intemperances into patterns of usefulness and creativeness and constructiveness. It is the gradual victory of a friendship over enemy, animosity. It takes the stranger out of existence and puts the friend in its place. Everything is part of working towards a harmonious balance of the natural resources of the solar power. Everything can be used to advance the common good, but everything that is used to destroy will be destroyed by its own de destructiveness within itself. Now another phase of that is now coming into, into focus very strongly in the problem of general reformation in human relationships. We have today a problem of marriage, divorce, adoption of children, all these different moral issues. Now we're going to have to finally settle down and every person will have to decide whether he is going to fulfill his own purposes or whether he is going to obey the laws of nature. If he obeys the laws of nature and understands them, things will be solved. If he keeps on doing as he pleases with no consideration for values or for the rights and purposes of nature, he will be in trouble. Everywhere it is energy, energy that must be properly used. Now we have in the, not now considerable emphasis upon the creation of new energy symbols. And this is a, more or less an interesting phase of our problem. The ancients used all kinds of symbolic designs to indicate energy. They had their pentacles and their signs and their symbols and their images. And in metaphysical thinking, philosophical thinking, there was a great emphasis upon meditation and the mantras and mudras of the esoteric doctrines. These are very important. But now comes the question. Meditation is a mood for the distribution of energy. The power of meditation has to do with the use of magnetic energy energy. Therefore, the problem of meditation is very simple. You say to yourself, I, I want to develop a higher grade or higher level of integrity. Therefore, through meditation and the dedication to the highest principles that I know, I will achieve a great improvement in character. Now, this is very good, proper. It's been followed by sadhus and hermits for ages. It had been followed by early Christian monks for nearly 2,000 years. It was, there's nothing wrong in meditation. But someone, out of the smartness of something, decided that by meditation he could also accomplish a certain amount of selfish uh, uh, fortune for himself. I know one individual who uh, taught uh, high disciplines for the sake of improving socially, making a wealthy marriage, uh, increasing in business, uh, dominating other people, and he was doing very well with it. One day I got a telephone call from the local hospital. This individual was sick. So he went down. I said, well, what seems to be the trouble? And the, it was a woman. She was in tears. She said, you know, all my life, or for many years, I've taught people to think rich, think happy, Think healthy, and I am dying of cancer. Well, that is again a strange kind of poetic justice that seems very cruel. No question about it. But the individual had broken the rules that associate with magnetic energies. The rule of all possession is right use. The use of all esoteric doctrines and disciplines is for the advancement of the common good. And when we start meditating for a fortune or something, we are headed to trouble. Because this is contrary to the proper use of magnetic resources. 
Magnetism is a great field of energy available to all. The price of it is simple. Earn it. You've got to be right, and all the energy of space is available for the right use that you can make of it. And as much as the right use is you can understandingly create at the proper time. But the moment the individual becomes selfish or self-centered, the magnetic field of his own body begins to fail. Kilner pointed out that, that there is great difference in these matters, and other scientists have noted that where selfishness comes into a religious situation, there's always a disappointment. And where we are selfish in marriage, where we are selfish in relationships, we are destroying the defenses of our own magnetic field. Now, actually, there is a certain poeticness in this in, uh, injustice on these particular problems. The individual who is selfish and abuses the field loses the protection of his own life against the selfishness of others. If he loses his own protection, then the selfishness of others can move in on him. And if he tries to take something from another, he also opens the door for that person or some other person to take something from him. It is reciprocity. Energy is the most important and priceless of all ingredients. It is something that everyone needs and must have. The waste of energy, the abuse of energy, is the abuse of the magnetic fields. The moment they are abused, they fail us. And very often the failure is a kind of poetic justice. It is something that happens that we can't explain. Uh, but I think we find it, it was clearly indicated in Goethe's line of Faust. It says, how closely fate is licked to, to virtue doth never to the fool occur. Had he the wise man's stone, I swear it, the stone had no philosopher. Wherever we have skill, we have knowledge, we have unusual abilities, we have been given good educations, we have been perhaps by good parents advanced in as much morality as possible, and then we go out and immediately sacrifice all that we have gained or has been helped to, how we have been helped to have on our own personal selfishness. That means no wise man's stone for us. That means that we will not be able to succeed because we have, in a treasonable manner, perverted that which was our constructive birthright. So we are here today as part of a world of selfish people. We are here today with everybody trying to get theirs before somebody else takes it away from them. We are here in the presence of governments of questionable integrity, uh, products of questionable value, and also another general factor which we must uh, also face. And that is, we are now nearly five or and a half, almost six billion disillusioned people. We have not much faith in anything. Every day the newspaper helps us to lose what uh, honesty and faith we might have. We can become finally convinced that we live in a completely corrupt world. Therefore we are bewildered, we are intimidated, we are worried, and very often just simply give up and follow the line of least resistance and go down with the rest. Now this isn't really the way it was intended to be. Actually, the, the bad news that we have has nothing to do with us unless we're part of the bad program. Now you might say well, it's nicer to imagine a world in which we could all work together. There's no doubt about it, it'd be much better. But until such time, the individual who is trying to be right has got to be careful that he is not infected by a common disillusionment. He cannot afford to say everything is wrong and mean it. He's got to hold inside of himself a realization that principle is the basic value and that regardless of what happens in the world, he cannot lose sight of protecting his own energy resources because it might just so happen that he could be one of those could help to change the course of history. In other words, disillusionment, despair, discouragement, bitterness, anger, frustration, all these do nothing to the person against whom they are turned. 
but they do everything to the individual who uses them. Therefore, no matter what we read in the paper, no matter what comes to us over the radio or in television, the individual must retain within himself the realization that there is a great good behind everything and that that great good will succeed and that this magnetic field we're talking about, which extends not only through this solar system but through the entire galaxy, decrees within itself by its own immutable process that evil can never win. We must go through certain travail in connection with it. We have to finally learn to our own satisfaction that we can't do it badly and be well off. But until such time, values never change. Never will we be punished for what somebody else does. Never will we be rewarded for the virtues of others. We must achieve these things ourselves through our own efforts, through our own integrities, and through our own dedications. And all of this is added up in a mysterious bank account which is called energy or magnetic resource. It is there to serve us. It is there to serve the individual who does wrong. But if the individual does wrong, the service collapses. And the individual who does wrong finally finds the energy turns back upon himself and the corruption continues. We must keep this center of consciousness within ourselves in a condition of correctness. In Buddhism, the heart is called the Saptapana, the, the house or temple with seven rooms. It is within this temple, as Buddha points out, that the great initiation against the hindrances has to be performed. The individual has to be initiated in his own heart. He must accept as a fact that his own integrity is his only strength and also that his own honesty is his only wealth. All else is some kind of a delusion which will ultimately turn back and whip him. So in the quietude and peace of the realization of the immutability of good, the inevitability of right over wrong, the endless and continuous process of redemption going through every area of nature, all things in due time will come back into the peace which they sacrifice when they try to put self as an individual above universal reality. We are all, we should have, I don't see how we have gotten into the state we've gotten into really, because I do know, but I'm not mentioning it. <laughs> the real fact of the matter is that as we look around us, there's every reason to know that we live in a beautiful world. We live in a tremendous sphere. And we are already beginning to realize that we're destroying it ourselves. It is not some vast cosmic power that says we have to be selfish or that puts a profit against principle. These things don't exist in nature. We know that with moderation, with integrity and dedication, we could all live in peace and another five billion could live with us. But the way we are doing, we are sacrificing everything for a bowl of pottage. And if we continue to do this, the energy resources will be reduced. We are worried now about changes taking place in the atmosphere. That the overload that we are throwing against our natural resources is beginning to endanger us. Now we can go under our own skin and see that the same thing is happening inside of us. The overloading of our body with the problems and, pro and uh, processes of modern living obviously is going to result in, dest in destitution and death. We cannot afford to waste the magnetic field of the body or destroy it any more than we can afford to destroy the one of the earth. If we are going to run out of petroleum someday, we are also going to run out of the ability to recuperate from ailments if we dispose of and waste our recuperative power. The magnetism which helps digestion can be destroyed, wasted by corruption. When we do, take into ourselves dangerous foods, dangerous <laughs> attitudes, or when we eat with a dangerous mood, we are endangering ourselves. And when the world does these things, the world endangers itself. And we will not be the first civilization, as is said in India, the great mother of the earth has cast many civilizations from her back. 
everything that goes beyond a certain point is destroyed because it breaks up its relation with its energy supply. It no longer is fed primarily by magnetism because it's magnetism in the food that feeds us, it's magnetism in the air that we breathe, it's magnetism in the earth that grows our vegetables, and it is magnetism in our souls that makes us hope for good. All the things we know, all the things we believe in, are energy dependent. And the use of energy is the most important thing. Why we go on year after year making all kinds of efforts to feel better, be better, or think better, and overlook the one fact that everything that we think and feel and believe depends upon a life principle, an energy resource a magnetism of the earth itself and that while this is destroyed or while this is abused we will have the earth becoming more and more sterile we have the have air no longer fit to believe we will find the energies we have wasted lost to us forever all these things require just one new concept and that is that religion is basically the proper use of resource it is to use the privileges that we have been given for the greater good of all of us. We have been made gardeners in a beautiful garden and we've let it go to weed. We have been given a beautiful planet and we've subdivided it and sold it for profits. The original purpose was that we should become a wonderful group of human beings working together for the good of each other and the glory of the universe. We are being prepared for a bigger job than we have but we are flunking the examination at the present moment. We are not doing what we should do. Everything that comes along is measured in profit. Everything that comes along is measured in freedom from responsibility. When energy is something that we must be responsible for or we will waste it forever. Or as long as we can. By the time forever comes there won't be much energy left. But all this is a, a, a lesson in the morality of values. It is a lesson in the fact that we are the keepers in a garden. We are the gardeners in the garden of Allah, as the Muslim calls it. This is a beautiful garden that has been given to us, and we're letting it go to weed. We had a beautiful world with wonderful materials, so we dig under the earth and create materials to create war, death, and destruction. We have little gardens that we have beautiful times sitting under our own palm tree, but we are fighting to take everybody else's garden away from them. And when we finally find a small plot of land that we might be able to use, we find the real estate agents have priced it ten times its value. All these things are all little things, but they all add up to the loss and waste of magnetic resource. They are the failure of the individual to protect the source of his own life, the source of his own future, and the breaking of the laws and rules by which he must compa compare his own needs with the, the needs of others. It is only when we work to protect the toadstool as well as the nation that we can have peace in the world. We must protect the small things because each of them is a run energy resource. The protection of them is, a, is against our viewpoint because we take it for granted that the small should be controlled by the big. That, we have, that small things, like humble people, are made to be exploited. This is not true. Everything in life is made to be used. Nothing is made to be abused. And the individual who abuses any part of life is contributing to the common cause of destruction. Now, this uh, business of the, uh, the energy and uh, magnetic resource went on down through to the present time. Now we have a new measurement for it, and that is the development of a large group of electrical devices, by means of which it becomes apparent to us that it is possible for the human being to make use of any energy as he sees fit. Now the instrument that he has within himself is infinitely more wonderful than any television or any computer can possibly be. We can have a computer do everything, and it is alive. Don't for a minute think it isn't. But it is alive in a field of energy. It has a life. It can propagate itself. It can develop itself. It can grow up. It can grow old, and it can die. Because it is all part of an energy usage. 
But in all of these usages, let's remember that the individual is humanity's prime asset. The individual is here to grow. And in growing, he grows by helping everything else to grow. The moment he goes into negative competitive relationships with everything else, he destroys himself. So out of a great brotherhood involving potatoes, diamonds, computers, uh, television, music, everything is part of a magnificent harmonic pattern. But the individual has forgotten or neglected to mature his own inner life. He was given religion in the beginning to help him to build an internal life. For religion was nothing but a statement of the rules. It wasn't a doctrine. It was a statement of the laws that have to be obeyed. Man has gradually disobeyed these rules, and now he questions the reality of religion. But he has never been able to prove that the religion was wrong. It was merely inconvenient. It prevented him from being as selfish as he would like to be. This being the case, he's in serious trouble. But out of all of this, we hope that the coming of the next century, that we're going to find the real basis of our understanding. We're going to discover the good universe, which we have forgotten existed if we ever knew it. We're going to suddenly realize that galaxies and stars and systems in space are not just simply something out there to, conv to provide us with energy to run motors with or that we are going to save or solve all the problems of nature if we can get a photograph of ourselves standing on Mars. This has nothing to do with it. We are living in a great, beautiful world of cooperating forces, uh, filled with things that want to get together and work together for the common good. And all we can do is make games out of them, silly games, games in which we think we are conquering everything by putting something in orbit. That's not, that's not at all true. What really we are looking for is to realize that we conquer or we win or we achieve our goal when we put ourselves in orbit and we get back again into the rules of the game of life. Serve it as it should be served. Love as it should be loved. Admire the good, protect it, and slowly and quietly outgrow everything that is less. If we can do that, then these resources, these magnetic fields, will supply us with all the energy the world needs for millions of years. It will not be the loss of the energy, but it will be that the, if we do, do not make these corrections, we will not be able to draw the energy to ourselves, and that which cuts itself off from life is the dead branch that is cast back into the fire. So out of an understanding of energy and the magnetic resources, we go a long way toward solving the present problems. That's it. Thank you.